Well, I guess maybe we should uh, get started. Uh, I want to welcome you uh, to this edition of the Brown Bag Lunch Discussion, sponsored by Sachs Department of Language, Philosophy, and Culture. My name is Richard Scherning. I am Professor of Philosophy here at SAC, and I'll be your host for this uh, discussion. Uh, the topic of our discussion is the phrase or the sentence, I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. It's something that I hear fairly frequently, and maybe you have as well, or maybe it describes you. But in the course of my about 15 or 20 minute presentation, I'm going to try to explain what I think it means and then evaluate whether it makes uh, any sense. After my presentation, the floor will be open to your questions and comments, and I hope you'll take advantage of that so we can get a true discussion going and not just a, a lecture. Now, I was uh, drawn to this topic in part uh, on the basis of Uh, a Pew survey that came out last year uh, on uh, America's changing religious landscape. The survey had a number of questions that were given to respondents, 35,000 respondents in fact. And you can see what the question was here. Uh, what is your present religion, if any? And then you check the appropriate box that described you. The one that's of interest to us is the, the last box here, nothing in particular. This, uh, people who had checked this box were called unaffiliated by the Pew survey for the reason that they're not affiliated with any particular organized religion. Let's take a look at what I think are some notable uh, results of that survey. Uh, in the right hand column you have the percentages of people who check these boxes in the 2014 survey. In the left-hand column is a survey that was done seven years earlier by Pew. And one of the things, a couple of things you notice, those who check the evangelical Protestant box, the Catholic box, and the mainline Protestant box all decrease in percentage. Whereas those who check the unaffiliated box or none box increase by almost 7%. And I think that's somewhat remarkable. And it leads into our uh, area of discussion uh, th this afternoon because most of the people who check no or no affiliation generally will describe themselves as not being religious but being spiritual. And I'll, by the way, I'll abbreviate that uh, henceforth as simply NRBS, and those who take that view will be NRBSers. All right, so what exactly is entailed in this view? Clearly it's got two parts. The NR part, the non-religious part, is pretty straightforward. These are people who do not identify with any named organized religion or even non-denominationalism. So they're not Catholics, they're not uh, Baptists, they're not Muslims, not Orthodox Jews, etc. However, they want to make it clear that they're not to be confused with atheists or agnostics. They are believers and they are spiritual. So, in looking at the second part, but I am spiritual, that's a little bit more difficult to get a handle on. But what seems to be at the heart of that view is the notion that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe in something and then you push that a little bit further and it doesn't mean literally believe in something. I, mean, I believe that Austin is the capital of Texas. That, that's not what they're talking about, of course. They mean you have to have a belief in a higher power. So, moving on to then trying to expand on what that means is, once again, a bit tricky. Uh, there isn't uh, a consistent, clear delineation of what constitutes a higher power. But I have uh, five uh, 
characteristics here that are often associated with the notion of a higher power. And it's probably worth our effort to just walk through them. First, the higher power is a supernatural being. It's not found in time and space or made up of matter and energy. And it's a, it's a supernatural being with uh, truly awesome powers, maybe maximal power, maximal knowledge, and maximal goodness. It is often said that the higher power is the creator of the world, that the higher power has an interest in and communicates with human beings. The higher power issues moral directives and judges humans on the basis of those moral directives. That's pretty much it. Uh, now, when you look at this, it, it sounds not too different than someone who might be a Catholic or a Baptist or a Muslim or a Jew, but the difference is that in those more traditional organized religions, this is just a part of what is, constitutes their beliefs. Their beliefs go way beyond this. And so we can call this a theology light, I guess. This is it, and maybe not even all of this. And that, I think, is one of the characteristics in general of NRBS. It's not heavy-duty theology by any means. All right. Now, why is it that NRBS has become so attractive to so many people, as we saw in the Pew survey results? Uh, I think there are two main reasons. One is relativism, and the other is uh, an, uh, an appreciation or uh, a realization of flaws in organized religions. So let's look at each of these and walk through that. All right. It says, NRBS comfortably accommodates relativism. I think this is important because most of the people who declare themselves to be not religious but spiritual are in fact younger people, under 35. Well, that's young to me. <laughs> Uh, and they have, they're, they're the, a generation that has grown up in a very relativistic atmosphere. So I teach ethics classes, and when students come into that ethics class, they almost always come in with the notion that morality is relative. Uh, you have your view on abortion, I have my view, nobody's right, nobody's wrong, it's just a matter of personal pre preference or taste. And that extends to other areas, to politics, and heaven forbid, even to science. Uh, there are people who, for example, are aware that 97% of climate scientists uh, have affirmed that the climate is changing and that human beings have a, a, a large role to play in that. But their view is, well, that's their take. I have a different take. It just doesn't seem like it works for me, and that's all right. There's no right or no wrong in it. Uh, that's very scary, but that's a topic for another day. At any rate, uh, NRBS can accommodate this relativism, especially in the description of the higher power. Just a few minutes ago, I gave five characteristics of the higher power, but as I said, if you have a notion of a higher power that's not quite the same as that, it has some extra things or has fewer things, that's fine. There's no right or wrong answer to it. A higher power is anything you think or want it to be, as it were. And that re resonates well with younger people. A second uh, aspect that I think contributes to the attractiveness of uh, NRBS is that many who embrace that view are aware or they believe that there are flaws in organized traditional religion. And among those are uh, a violent and intolerant past uh, with regard to religions. Uh, you can think of the Crusades, Muslims and Christians slaughtering each other. Uh, the Thirty Years' War, if you know something about your European history, maybe as many as four or five million people, Catholics and Protestants, slaughtering each other. It was the greatest slaughter until World War I. Um, those kinds of things are associated by NRBSers with traditional organized religion. It divides people, it sets them against one another, we don't want any part of that. Uh, secondly, 
organized religion has a lot of scriptures and doctrines that come out of those scriptures. But, as my students will sometimes remind me, but who wrote the scriptures? It was men, right? The implication being that men are inclined to be flawed themselves and to make mistakes, and so religious doctrines that are based on their writings <coughs> are suspect as well. Plus the fact that there's no agreement among them, even within, uh, for example, within Christianity, there are different interpretations of the Bible, and it's all, once again, uh, confusing and contradictory, and it doesn't contribute to spirituality at all. We don't, we don't need it. Tainted religious leaders, uh, think of the recent scandal of pedophile priests or other fundamentalist preachers who have been caught literally and figuratively with their pants down, and this puts, uh, puts NRBSers off. Uh, stale religious bureaucracies. All these organized religions come with organizations, bureaucracies, which, in which the, uh, from the perspective of the NRBSers, are filled with bean counters uh, who are jockeying for political position within those organizations, and they contribute, once again, nothing towards spirituality. Uh, religious observances are unavailable. We don't need to say the rosary, we don't need to go to mass, we don't need to go to Bible class or, or temple. Uh, we have a direct, uh, we have an ability to have a direct connection with the higher power. And this infuses us with proper spirituality. Uh, the rest is not necessary. And then finally, uh, overly judgmental religious communities where you have uh, people who are not towing the line in those communities, are shunned, or are excommunicated. This is harmful and hurtful, and once again, something that NRBSers simply want to distance themselves from. So I think those two reasons, and relativism and uh, an aversion to organized religion, uh, I think have moved people to move toward NRBS, and not, um, but again, they don't want to be disbelievers, they still want to hold on to the notion of spirituality and supernatural uh, truths. All right, now, having some idea, at least, I try to give you some idea what I think NRBS is all about, does it make sense? Well, I think there are problems with it. I've got five of them here that I want to go over with you. Uh, the first one is that NRBSers give insufficient evidence that a higher power actually exists. One would think that that would be, well, NRBS 101. Uh, if you're saying that true spirituality resides in the notion of a higher power, then it would seem that if you think your view makes any sense, you should be prepared to tell me why I should accept that as well. In other words, give me some reason to think that there is a higher power. NRBSers basically don't do that, nor do they think they have to. Uh, and that, I think, is a significant problem. The other four problems I express in the form of questions. Why did it take so long in history for the higher power to clearly reveal itself and its messages? After all, NRBS phenomenon is a relatively recent one. We're talking about a couple of, two or three decades, maybe. Organized religions have been around for thousands and thousands of years, which leads into the third problem or question here. Why has the higher power permitted spiritually defective organized religions to so, to so successfully impose their brands for so long on so many people. If indeed the higher power does have those powers, and it has a power, uh, has a characteristic of goodness, you think it would want us to know how we're supposed to relate to it, him, them, whatever, uh, and how we should behave, and so on. 
you wouldn't expect the higher power to hide his light under a bushel. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's only recently that this has come out. This is hard to explain. Number four, why are the higher powers' moral directives so vague? Uh, I didn't say this, but they really are. If you talk to someone who considers herself or himself uh, not religious but spiritual and ask, okay, the higher power gives moral directives, what does the higher power say about capital punishment? What does the higher power say about euthanasia, about abortion, about stem cell research? You're going to get a wide variety of responses. And it seems pretty clear that they all can't be true. The higher power has got his act together. It's not going to be giving different people different conflicting uh, moral directives. So what are the correct moral directives? Why would the higher power not have the ability to be very clear about what he wants us to do? And then finally, uh, the last problem here, how can the higher power be maximally powerful, knowledgeable, and good, and yet cause or permit so much human and animal suffering? This is the traditional problem of suffering that bedevils, no pun intended, virtually all religions, whether NRBS or the traditional religions. If you have the notion of a being that is worship-worthy, then that being has to have some awesome powers. We're not going to be worshiping somebody who has only limited powers, goodness, and knowledge. We left that behind with the Greek and Roman gods. We, if we're going to worship something, it has to catch our attention. It has to have the credentials. And so almost all of the religions that we find in the world today impute great powers, maximal power, maximal knowledge, maximal goodness. Well, if the being has all of those things, then why is the world so sucky? Why is it that 21,000 children under age 5 are dying in this world every day? In fact, in the time that I just said, it took me to tell you that, four or five more kids under 5 just died. Uh, that needs to be explained, uh, and NRBSers don't do that. Um, and one would think that that would be an important point. All right, so I think there are problems with NRBS. What about conclusions? I wrap this up before we get to your comments and questions. In conclusion, I think we can sum up and say that I'm not religious but I am spiritual is a vague, relativistic, and not well-supported view of the supernatural which distance its adherence from organized religion. All right, number two, NRBS is a threat to the religious establishment. And that's not nothing, because in the United States, the religious establishment has had and continues to have significant influence on politics, culture, and other areas. And for that to be uh, diminished is going to result in quite a change in how this country is going to proceed in the future. Whether that's good or bad, you can decide for yourself. But clearly, it seems as if NRBS is siphoning away adherence from the traditional organized religions. Third, carrying on somewhat uh, from the second one, NRBS will likely continue to change the landscape of American culture and politics. And notice I say will continue to, because I think it already has. If you think about these areas here, within the last two decades or so, you can see a significant change in attitudes towards sexual morality, LBGT issues, drug legalization. Uh, a couple of states have legalized marijuana. I bet others are going to be following soon. Euthanasia, just yesterday, California. Uh, allow, it will now allow, under certain circumstances, assisted suicide. Uh, we know gay marriage is now more normative than it's ever been, and so on. I think it's fair to say that a good part of the reason for this is that the cohort that now fills up the NRBS uh, lists is largely the one that's responsible for these changes. And so I think since that's going to continue, I would say 
you're going to see even more changes in this direction in the future. And then finally, some might want to say that uh, the move from traditional religion to NRBS is a stepping stone to making the final jump to non-belief uh, altogether, either atheism or agnosticism. Again, you can decide whether that's good or bad, but that certainly will change the face of the United States, which by all accounts is the most religious of the industrialized countries, and in fact one of the most religious countries, or has up to now been one of the most religious countries. So if that indeed does happen, uh, we'll start looking more like Denmark or France or something with respect to religion in the future. That will be a different United States than the one that we have grown up in. Um, okay, well, that is my setup lecture, as it were. By the way, if, uh, if you need to leave, and I know some of you may have to do that, don't worry about it, just, I know you're, you know, you're being polite and so on, you can go. But if you want to talk to me more about this in any way, these are, this is my office on this floor, and this is my email, feel free to contact me. So, uh, I hope we can get some questions and comments uh, from you and, and get this uh, into a real discussion here. Who would like to start? Yes, sir. I'm just having trouble um, differentiating between the belief, the NRBS belief in a higher power, and a Christianity belief in God. Wouldn't God be considered a higher power? Yes, and I, and I think everything that's in NRBS is also in Christianity. But then there's a whole lot more, like the Trinity, like the Incarnation. Uh, and then, of course, depending on what version of Christianity, maybe the papacy and so forth. So uh, the organized religions have a lot more than that, and that's what NRBS gets kind of turned off by. They think that, uh, that the, the organized religions have gone on their own, flying off in, into areas that they shouldn't. All you need to know is that there's a spiritual higher power, you can relate to it, and you should do good things and not do bad things, and that's all. You can sleep in on Sundays too, by the way. <laughs> I wonder, though, if they're, they're, that some people who identify as spiritual but not religious, that their spirituality is watered down even a bit further than you presented. Um, because you have a list of characteristics of the Judeo-Christian God and, and such, right? And I think a lot of people who call themselves spiritual would say, no, I don't believe any of that either. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> I think that astrology is pretty interesting and the universe works in mysterious ways and you know these kind of general vague ideas about I don't know what's going on yeah, um, yeah. so and then they call themselves spiritual but they could agree with you know all of that and, and but still I, I just maybe you're giving them too much religious belief you know well yeah and I hear what you're saying David and uh, what, I, what I was saying too was that this is this is the, the, the most that they would probably want to believe, but there, like you suggested, many of them may not buy onto many of these as well. So uh, it's very difficult to tie them down. Uh, I've had conversations with students, and sometimes trying to understand what they're saying is like trying to nail jelly to the wall or something. It, it's, it's very yeah, fluid. Clear answer. Right? Yeah, 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 and and so you, I, I, I take what you're saying. I think you're right. Yeah, it's even. I guess the way I the the way I see that they're coming across uh, at the end of the day, they're their own gods because really there's nothing out there. I mean, how can you prove? I mean, they're just like whatever. You know, I myself decide. Well, and it, they're yeah, the I'm spiritual sorry. strength kind of deals. Like really. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I, I think that's where the relativism comes in, or subjectivism, which is sort of another kind of relativism. Um, yeah, I, I think they are, um, what, we, what do we normally say that in, in the uh, Judeo-Christian Islamic tradition, God creates man in his image. Uh, here, like I think you're suggesting, it seems like NRBSers are creating God in their image, what they want it to be, and uh, that may be that may be a, a problem. Which is what their own rules, their own. I mean, they really don't have any guidelines. Uh, I 
always like to use an example like the freeways. We have uh, lines, I mean, you stay within the line, and they're there for a reason. We made those lines because we know that if you don't stay in those lines, we don't have any lines, you're, everybody's out on the freeway. It's kind of like the end of the year, whatever, <coughs> you know, yes. not spiritual, what have you. Yeah. It's like, okay, so where's your guidelines? Where, where are you getting? So you are the beginning and the end, or I mean, you're like, whatever goes out there. Go here, go there. There's no stop lights, there's no red lights, there's no yellow, there's nothing. And that creates chaos, and that's exactly what they're... Well, no, I don't think that's that true at all. Yeah, yeah, now you're forcing me into defending them almost. <laughs> <laughs> You're suggesting that if someone doesn't believe in God, they have no rules and they no, don't respect No, no, what, what I'm saying is uh, they're saying, okay, I, I'm spiritual, but there is no guidelines because like you were just saying, where is your proof? I mean, why did God wait so, why did your God wait so long to be noticed or has revealed himself? You know, where, where is this? This And I'm saying the example that I'm using, when you've got the, the lines on the freeway, you know, they were there to begin with. When the freeways were created, they were there to begin with. I understand that, but... So, they're, they're there for a reason. So, where is your God, or you are born? Doesn't exist. Yeah, so. Why can't the God of a person that believes in NRBS be, coincide with the God that you believe in Christianity? I mean, just because we don't go to, or just because NRBS people don't go to church and blah, 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 doesn't mean that they don't believe in the same God you believe in. They just have a different way of approaching that God, which is which doesn't include the church. I mean, except, yeah, except also remember the church says that if you want to properly relate to that supernatural being, then you do need to go to the church. Uh, this is something that our students don't quite get. They think it doesn't matter what church you go to. It, it, I ask a question. This is very interesting. I ask. I teach a religions class. And I asked a question on the discussion board for my online class, is there a correct religion? And I'm expecting to get, well, yeah, and then, you know, and then the next question is, which is it and how do we know? And we never get to which is it and how do we know? Because they all answer no, there's no correct religion. Uh, and they, they talk about religions as if they're talking about health clubs. You pick one that you like, the one that's convenient, the one you're comfortable with. Well, how about picking the right one? There is no right one, and so on. So, uh, but the, I tell them, but the religions themselves don't agree with you. They are going to say there is a right one. Catholics are going to say, look, with all due respect to Methodists and Baptists and Jews and Muslims and so on, we're the right way to relate to God. And Muslims are going to say the same thing, and so are that. Anyway, so the point is, uh, to take that kind of NRBS stance is not uh, going to go over well with those religions in the sense that you're, you're cutting corners. You should be with us as Southern Baptists or with us as Mormons or whatever. And, and I think that's, that's the, why you can't just simply say, well, um, you know, NRBS is enough. It may be for them, but the idea is the religions themselves are not going to say, no, you're not with us if you're just that. Doesn't Hinduism um, accept the beliefs of coinciding gods Hinduism is very tolerant, yes, yeah. and, and that's true generally of polytheisms. They're, they're not so jealous. I mean, uh, let a thousand flowers bloom, you know, you want to... Yeah. Yeah. So they wouldn't that, be upset with this at all. I that believed in Jesus. He's like, yeah, I believe in Jesus and God too, but he, didn't, he just kind of made it seem like that was another one of his gods, yeah. uh, the was Christian it, God. Was it another uh, um, um, avatar of Vishnu, Jesus? Yeah, I think I've heard that, the yeah. avatar of Vishnu. Yeah. I don't know if he believed it that Jesus was the avatar of Vishnu necessarily, just that he also accepted the Christian God. Yeah, I don't, not, I don't think he did, but I think some yeah. others oh, okay, yeah. yeah, but you're quite right. Hinduism wouldn't have a problem with NRBS. Hinduism generally doesn't have a problem with anything. Uh, you know, if you want to be a Buddhist, that's fine. Uh, but uh, no, although that's changing a little bit now, uh, uh, there's a, a party within India, a political party, that is sort of a religious political party, and they are starting to push back against, let's say, Islam and some of the other religions that they see uh, crowding in on Hinduism. Hinduism is a religion for people in India, and it's the right religion for people in India, and you should follow it, and, and much less tolerant than it was in the past. But otherwise, you're right, yeah.
what would you say to the, I mean, we have this conversation where you have Christians who say Christianity is not a relation, it, religion, it's a relationship, and therefore I'm spiritual, I'm a follower of Christ, I believe in the Bible, I believe in Jesus and God, and that's it. And I'm not going to argue, clearly I love arguing with you, but that's beside the point. Um, you know, you have people who say it's it's just a relationship, and so therefore they're spiritual, they don't want to claim Protestant, they don't want to claim Catholic, they just, the Bible, that's it. Yeah, that's a good point, Lisa, and um, the, 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 the traditional religions are not about to give up their claim to spirituality. They're going to say, you know, we're not unspiritual. We reject the, the, the uh, objections that, you were, that the NRBSs were raising here. We can, we can explain the violence, we can explain this and that and so forth and, and so on. Uh, but it doesn't apparently uh, fly with the NRBSs. They still say, well, you can say you're really spiritual, but how come the pedophile priest? What, what's going on there? Uh, why is it that uh, we've got uh, the history of violence with all these religions? This does not have the fingerprints of true spirituality all over. It has the fingerprints of grubby human beings who are trying to create some sort of supernatural superstructure in which they can operate to their own advantage, blah, blah, blah. So they're, they're going to be unreceptive. NRBS is going to be unreceptive to that. They're going to say, no, true spirituality. And, you know, it's a little bit Protestant. They're sort of saying true spirituality doesn't need organizations. And that's not exactly what Martin Luther and his contemporaries said, but there is a sense in which they say, we just can go directly to God. Uh, and, and we can hook up, but then they add on all the extra stuff with, you know, the Lord's Prayer and, and, and the sacraments or the lack of sacraments and, and so on. And then as soon as the NRBSers hear that, they go, no, 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 the eyes glaze over. You know, you, you had it. You almost had it. Yes, we can go directly to the, the, the supernatural source, but then you load it up with all this other crap. We see that. We get rid of that crap. We just go with, you know, in our, with, with the higher power, and that's all you really need. I have a question. So, since they are so fluid with their, like, beliefs, um, as far as the future of the U.S. and, like, how it can affect, like, or how it's starting to influence, like, huge political issues, how would they come together if they are so liberal in their views? Is it, like, more of an idea of, like, relativism and, like, liberalism, or do they all agree that being progressive is is like the right way because like it seems that way but whenever you talk to in, in our BS or they're very like like tolerant of other people's views and think their own so how is it that they're able to organize a more progressive direction or are they late or not well there's no organization uh, in that sense what they agree upon is that there's no organization <laughs> and that you can believe whatever you want. So they agree on relativism, although it's not a formal thing. They don't go around saying, oh, you're a fellow NRBS, let's, let's, let's hear it for relativism. Yeah. Uh, they're just going to basically, uh, they're, they're, the way they're coming at it is, look, we're tolerant. <coughs> and it's hard to not like tolerance. Uh, it's not like this world suffers from too much damn tolerance. You know? And so in that sense, uh, I can even be somewhat understanding about NRBS. But um, that, that tolerance essentially blanches out any sort of yes. coherent understanding of what they're saying. It's just a, 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 a gesture. We should be nice to one another. We should do good. We should not do bad. And, uh, and there's some sort of supernatural being that's looking over all of this. That's all you need. And, and uh, I'm thinking, it's interesting because I'm 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 an atheist, but I think uh, Jeannie and I would probably agree that that this NRBS doesn't really hold together well for different reasons maybe, but we would agree, and 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 that's the problem. It, it's a nice idea, but maybe what Jeannie might say is it Jeannie, right? Jamie. Jeannie, I'm sorry, Jeannie. Okay. Uh, what she might say is, well, why can't we? Why can't I still? I'm a I'm a Christian or I'm a Catholic and I'm tolerant of others just because I think there's a right answer to whether God exists and how we're supposed to relate to him. That doesn't mean that I'm intolerant towards others. 
And there's some sense to that too. Although, once again, then the history, you look back at the history, and it does seem to divide. So NRBSs are, I think, pushing this tolerance. So this is take a slightly different angle, but building on something you were just getting at, I think, is I mean, we, we ask the question about some, some viewpoint or some ideology, does it make sense? And you also may come down and say, well, no, it really doesn't. It sounds like you would say, and one level I know you, you would say, right, that, so therefore you shouldn't actually hold this position because it doesn't make sense, right? But then there is the sort of the more practical, political, ethical question of, okay, would you rather have people hold a relatively peaceful, non-threatening, incoherent idea, or a, you know, much more coherent, but dangerous and you know, violent, you know, you know just or entirely hypothetical um, options, of course, right? False choice. Well, 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 <laughs> why it's, not? It's, it's, why it's, not, it's, it's not a not coherent, the, intelligent no. position that's tolerant? Because, alas, that is not the <laughs> that is not the most likely of the options that they to choose from. The, the the two the two options they'll see on the buffet are either this wishy-washy, no toast relativism, or fundamentalism. I go with the the, the, yeah. the the one you said first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which, which yeah. Those actually, are the only two choices, sure. So it's like uh, so again, it's, it's my, my point is really just that clarification, right? To say something doesn't make sense is you're not saying that therefore that's somehow you know it's a, it's the worst option out there. It's that it's certainly not the best. Well, yeah, and from my perspective, you know, being a non-believer and also being a political liberal. I, it's hard for me to get too upset with NRBSs because uh, the actual results of their NRBSing it seems to lead, I think, to good results, and and so I, you know, I, I, I do understand that. But uh, I would urge them maybe think about taking that final step. <laughs> but far be it for me to. I mean, just kind of going off what Dustin said, I kind of like look at it from a historical, almost Hegelian perspective, that this is a necessary movement into a bigger, they're not quite ready to go to atheism or agnosticism, it's emotional perhaps, intelligence if you want to call it that, but in time they're going to question these beliefs further and the next step will happen. So this is just, when we push it in the context of time, we cannot expect suddenly to go from strong religious beliefs to the complete absence. That would be, it's just not unreasonable given what we know about humans. So this is just maybe one of those intermediary steps. A future time will be a future zeitgeist for however you want to say it. The, the, you're, I think you're right, Ken, and uh, there is a vague similarity to deism. Yes. Uh, the, the, deists were intellectuals in, in the seventh, late last half of the 1700s, who I think in some sense felt that uh, there was uh, not really enough evidence to really affirm Christianity, let alone Islam or some of the other religions, but somehow or other it's just too radical and also maybe too dangerous to assert non-belief, complete disbelief. And so uh, they, they took that intermediate step, uh, and then as Ken was saying, maybe that's uh, a, a, something that might lead to the, the, the final step, but uh, we don't know for sure. It certainly hasn't manifested itself quite yet in the United States. The, the nuns or the unaffiliated, that's growing pretty rapidly. The, the percentage of atheists and agnostics is rising, but it's rising much slower than, than the NRBS. what you get is something like, uh, well, what? Prove the existence of a higher power? They'll look at you kind of funny, first of all, but then they'll say, well, I just feel it. I, I, can't, I can't give you the proof. And anyway, proof is the an antithetical to, to spirituality. 
uh, we don't prove things uh, when it comes to spirit. We just feel them. And, and that, I think, is a problem because it's a recipe for chaos, isn't it? I mean, yeah, anybody can, quote, feel anything. Yeah, so, like, it's, it's too subjective. I mean, unless, like, I mean, I feel like, we're, like, I mean, the spirituality, I mean, it is your worldview, it is your philosophical views, unless someone were to assert that those are separate, but, I mean, can you really prove that they're separate? I mean, and that's important, isn't it? Because um, you, you, I, I, I give the credit to, to NRBSs. They are trying to find the proper way to conduct themselves in this world. And, and they think that the higher power business is the way to go. But it may, may make them feel good, getting back to what Dustin was saying. It makes them feel good, and, and they, uh, they actually end up doing the right sorts of things, at least that most of us would think are right. But if it's not really based on something that's accurate, is it really what they want? Uh, I mean, what they're really striving to get. Aren't they striving for truth? Isn't, aren't we all ultimately, well, maybe I'm being too philosophical here, but it seems to me I want to find out how things really are. Yeah. But you're a philosopher. Yeah, that's true. I like to a lot of people that might be drawn to this uh, are not drawn to it because they're, they're searching for truth or answers. It's because they have parents and grandparents that are religious, and they disagree with that. But they don't want to be the, you know, the atheist that defies their family and their traditions and Christmas and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. So they say, yeah, I still believe, but you know, not really. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it feels good. I mean, there's hope after life. Uh, so it, it doesn't. People it doesn't, get it in the end. It certainly doesn't require a whole lot of you. I mean, I will say this, if, if you're a, an Orthodox Jew or if you're a true Roman Catholic, there's stuff you got to do. And some of it isn't always pleasant in the sense that you have to get up and go to the church and say the rosary and, and go to eat certain foods or not eat other. Uh, so they're committed, they're walking the walk. NRBSs are talking the talk and there is no walk to walk. Uh, basically, you know, just don't murder anybody and and and, and be, be happy. That's and not that there's anything wrong. I agree. Don't yeah, don't murder anybody, be happy. I, I'm on board with that. But if that's your uh, the essence of your commitment, well, that's not a whole lot right there. Well do, do they need to believe in the higher power in order to be an incentive to act or be good or because they didn't believe in a higher power then they wouldn't feel like as much as an incentive because they will be judged later by some unclear ambiguous I think you raised a good question, and, and as, uh, as someone who's an atheist, that, I get that all the time, uh, that somehow or other religion is necessary to keep people on the straight and narrow, and without that, oh, what I would do, how many times, again, I've heard students say that, if I didn't think that da 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 I would, well, I think what you were suggesting is probably right. No, I, I think it's quite possible. We have uh, evidence, uh, abundant, that people without religious convictions are no worse than other people. And in fact, if you look at the countries in the world today that are most prosperous, peaceful, and, and uh, have the lowest crime rates, they are largely secular-oriented uh, societies. The ones that have the most trouble are the religious-oriented societies. I'm not saying that. You know, correlation is not causation. I'm just saying, look at that. Uh, so, yeah, sure, one can one can do all those good things without necessarily having the umbilical cord to to the uh, supernatural world. They're just hedging their bets, like Pascal, just in case. Tal vez, tal vez. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone? Yes. Um, is NRBS non-conducive to polytheism? Like. Can an NRBSer be polytheistic? I would think so. Uh, you could just simply, instead of saying a higher power, there are higher powers. Okay. Yes. Patrick? Yes. I was wondering that there's a general understanding among uh, traditional religious and the NLBSers that there's a, at least a somewhat standard moral for at least most of them that you should not murder. 
as what the a lot of the objection to war and, and death is the murder and would that not be uh, said to be an objective standard? Would that not be contradictory to their relativistic view? Um, I, I would I would think so. Although uh, again, they're not necessarily always going to be consistent. Uh, they might say, well, when it comes to that, yes, that that's objective. And even my students will often say that. Uh, but uh, I, on the other hand. What about capital punishment? What about war? What about pacifism? How would they deal with that? Well, again, they're all over the place uh, as to what constitutes so so-called okay killing or not. So uh, yeah, but th there are elements even with my students who come in and, and with this relativistic attitude towards towards uh, ethics. Uh, if you again tease them a little, tease <coughs> out some of their beliefs a little bit, you do find that there are some things they're willing to almost go to the mat for, like, uh, raping babies is wrong. Yes, okay, I'll agree to that, but, but what? But, well, what about abortion? I don't, there's no right answer there. And then I try to tell them, look, it doesn't make any sense to say that there are some actions that are objectively right and wrong and others are not. It seems going to be one or the other. Either all of them have the ability to be objectively evaluated, or none of them do. What you're probably saying is that I am quite, you're probably an objectivist. You're probably saying, I'm quite certain that genocide and raping children is objectively wrong. With abortion or euthanasia, I'm just not sure is what you're really saying. But you shouldn't jump from the fact that I'm not sure, I don't know what the answer is, to therefore there is no answer. That's a leap that is not supported by any evidence. And, and sometimes they get that and sometimes they don't. But Would you view that as a di different leap than the leap of faith? Um, well, again, when we talk about making leaps, it could be a rational leap. When you're doing a proof in logic, you're sort of going a leap from one step to the other, and it's, there's no faith involved. It's, it's just a matter of deductive uh, laws. Uh, but quite often, of course, the, the leap of faith is, is something that comes to people's mind when they hear leap. And that is, is something that's truly, purely non-rational, I would think. Right? you agree with I mean, when you take the leap of faith? I mean, Kierkegaard certainly made that pretty clear, didn't he? That the leap of faith is not to be uh, the product of some logical proof. It's, you just, you know, go and jump. And you just hope that God's there and going to provide a, a, a safe landing for you. And I'm right here about... Um Relative, uh, someone say rel everything is rel relativistic. I think to myself, or I sometimes have the opportunity to say it, that isn't that statement objective? No, isn't that statement itself, uh, itself uh, objective? If, if it's relativistic, then then why should we listen to you? Yeah, that's the referential problem with relativism. Wait a and minute. Couldn't it be a leap of faith if you have a student uh, who comes to you and says? Professor, would you recommend for me to take in another philosophy person? You just, by coincidence, give them the great professor that they need. Would that be then a good? Well, not really, because you you would maybe have the background information that this student is. You know, if you know the student that that they've been fairly reliable in the past, that they're not kidding or or trying to fool you, or even if you don't know them. The fact is, most people, when asked a question like that, there's no reason for them to, uh, to, to, to give you, uh, to tell a lie. It's possible, but in general, you can probably tentatively go along with that and say that's a reasonable thing to say. Are there both, uh, within this undefined pool of <coughs> NRBSers, are there both objectivists and subjectivists? in this mixture of people? Uh, there may be, but my sense is that they're mostly subjectivists slash relativists, at least uh, when it certainly comes to religion and, and morality. Now maybe, you know, when it comes to uh, geography or something, everybody is an objective. Everyone agrees Austin is indeed the capital of Texas, something like that. But Even though they believe in a higher power, it's a subjective higher power. There's not any that are objective in there. I don't know. You can't say there are, uh, there are none who are, because again, this is an amorphous group of people yeah. with uh, beliefs that are very hard to nail down, as I was saying to David, so 
Uh, I'm sure there might be a few that might be that way, but I don't think it's the prevailing ethos for them. I think a, a distinction might help here that what, what you're referring to is spiritual relativism, which is different from moral relativism. And I, I get the sense that it's, it's been equated a couple of times. Well, but I think they are related. They're related, yeah, but okay. they're not the same. Okay, right. Right. A yeah. person could be spiritually relative, say, you know, I really don't know, I kind of think there might be something out there. But when it comes to ethics, I am a strict, consistent yeah. utilitarian. And, yeah. Et cetera, right. et cetera, right? So yes. it's possible. All right, you've been a great audience, and uh, thank you for showing up, and uh, have a great day.